Welcome to Inventory in ICMS. This course will teach you how to create and print your random sample, controlled property, and accession inventories. Prerequisites for this lesson are the lessons for basic navigation, basic data entry, and queries, which explains how to activate a tag or filter and how to select multiple records in the list pane. All of the information we'll cover in this course is also available in other places. Chapter 1 of the ICMS User Manual covers system basics, such as navigation and data entry. Appendix I explains how to use the inventory in detail. Chapter 5 explains how to run reports. All DOI units using ICMS should already have a copy of the manual. It is also available in PDF format on the Rediscovery FTP site at ftp colon slash slash ftp.rediscov.com slash ICMS and on the DOI Museum Program website at www.doi.gov slash museum slash ICMS. We strongly recommend you read or review Chapter 1 and Appendix I of the ICMS User Manual and DOI Museum Property Directive 21, Inventory of Museum Collections. For NPS staff, also refer to Chapter 4 of the NPS Museum Handbook Part 2 when you begin to work with the inventory. Also, the online system help describes all of the program's basic navigation and data entry functions. Now we'll learn about the inventory module. From the home page, you can go anywhere using the keyboard or the mouse or a combination. In the navigator, use the up and down arrow keys to select a module. Whatever is selected in the navigator appears in the home page. Some of you might find this similar to Windows Explorer. With ABCD Cultural Resources selected in the navigator, press Tab to move to the home page. Press the down arrow key to select Inventory Control Page, then press Enter to open it. You can also click with the mouse. Note how the navigator is expanded to show all the modules. Inventory Control Page is selected, and you can use the up and down arrow keys to select a different module. You can also use the mouse to click the module you want to go to. NPS and Fish and Wildlife units need to know the highest catalog number and highest accession number in use at your unit in order to generate an accurate random sample inventory. You can check these numbers easily by going to the Catalog Records screen and the Accession screen and going to the last record to see what the number is. If you have both cultural resources and natural history collections, write down the last catalog number for both because you will need these later. Units within all other bureaus and offices where the NPS style numbering system is not in use do not need to determine the highest catalog number and accession numbers used. Now let's generate an inventory. You'll start on the Inventory Control page. Most units will generate their inventory from within their Cultural Resources directory. You can also do it within Natural History, but you should be consistent to avoid having multiple copies of the inventory. To generate a new inventory, click the Add button, or choose Add New Record from the Edit menu, or press F9 on the keyboard. A separate window opens. Enter your unit acronym and the fiscal year. Note how the field help explains what type of data to enter into each field. For NPS, the field help for the unit field includes special instructions for archaeology centers and parks that use a fifth letter in their acronym. Tab to the Directories to Check field. Enter CR and your unit acronym. If you have both cultural resources and natural history collections, press F12 to expand the field to add another directory. Type NH and your unit acronym to add that directory. Click Save to close the directories to check field. If you have additional directories that should be included in the inventory, press F12 to expand the field and add them. Most units will only include their main cultural resources and natural history directories. 
For most units, these two directories are the ones that have the unit acronym. NPS and Fish and Wildlife units will enter the highest catalog number and accession numbers in these fields. Bureau and Office units that do not use the NPS style numbering system will not fill in these fields. If your collection includes fewer than 250 items, you may check the random sample under 250 box. This will allow your random sample and accession inventories to generate a random subset of these records, rather than including all 250 or fewer items in the inventory. Since our training collection includes more than 250 items, we will not use this option. There are three types of inventories for DOI Museum property. We'll start with the random sample inventory. First, we'll generate a random sample of cataloged objects. To do this, click the Generate a New Random Sample Inventory link. The program will randomly select records for the inventory. When it is complete, it will tell you how many records were selected for the random sample based on the random sampling table in DOI Museum Property Directive 21. Since the ABCD collection contains 3,600 cataloged objects, you'll need to inventory 192 objects. Click OK. Next, we'll generate the Controlled Property Inventory. Click on the Generate a New Controlled Property Inventory link. The program will gather information from all catalog records that are marked as controlled property. Such records have a Y in the controlled property field. When it is complete, it will tell you how many records were selected. Click OK. Finally, generate the accession inventory if your unit has objects that are accessioned but not cataloged. Click the Generate a New Accessions Inventory link. The program will randomly select records for the inventory. Since the ABCD collection contains 1,000 accessions, the program will randomly select 169 records for the inventory. When it is complete, it will tell you how many records were selected. Click OK. Now that the inventory samples have been generated, click Save and Close at the bottom of the screen. You will return to the inventory control page showing the data you entered and the sample sizes. The next step is to print the inventory forms. Each of the three types of inventories has its own printed form. The forms are available from the screen for each inventory. You can get to each one by clicking the link on the inventory page or by using the navigator to select the inventory you need to work with. Start with the random sample inventory. Click that link to go there. The random sample screen opens. From this screen, you can print the random sample inventory form. This is also the screen where you will update the random sample inventory records, which we'll discuss later in the lesson. Usually, the first thing you'll do here is print the inventory form. From the record menu, choose Reports, then Proficio Reports. From the list of reports, choose the DOI Inventory Random Sample. NPS units will choose the 10349 form and reclamation units will choose the BOR form. All of these versions are the same except for the header on the form. Click the Run for All Visible Records link. The first page of the form is the signature page that must be signed when you have finished the physical inventory of the objects listed. Beginning on the second page of the form, the records you need to find during the inventory are listed. Note that the objects are listed in order by location, so you can easily move from shelf to shelf or room to room as you conduct the physical inventory. You'll carry this form with you and mark the columns indicated whether the object was found, whether it is damaged, etc. All blanks on the form should be filled in if possible. After printing the form for the random sample inventory, you'll return to the list of reports for the random sample screen. Click the Close link to return to the main random sample screen. From the random sample inventory screen, click the Controlled Property link to open the Controlled Property page. You can also click the Controlled Property node in the navigator. The Controlled Property screen opens. From this screen, you can print the Controlled Property Inventory form. This is also the screen where you will update the Controlled Property Inventory records, which we'll discuss later in the lesson. 
usually the first thing you'll do here is print the inventory form. Just as with all reports, from the record menu, choose reports, and then proficio reports. From the list of reports, choose the DOI inventory controlled property. NPS units will choose the 10349 form, and reclamation units will choose the BOR form. Click the Run for All Visible Records link. The first page of the form is the signature page that must be signed when you have finished the physical inventory of the objects listed. Beginning on the second page of the form, the records you need to find during the inventory are listed. Like the random sample list, the objects are listed in order by location to help you easily find the objects during the physical inventory. You'll carry this printed form with you and mark your findings. All blanks on the form should be filled in if possible. After printing the controlled property inventory, you'll return to the list of reports for the controlled property screen. Click the close link to return to the main controlled property screen. If your unit needs to conduct an accession inventory, you'll follow the same steps to print that form. Click on the accession link or the inventory accessions node in the navigator. Then you'll be viewing the accession inventory records. From the records menu, choose reports, then proficio reports. From the list of reports, choose the DOI inventory accessions. NPS units will choose the 10349 form, and reclamation units will choose the BOR form. Click the Run for All Visible Records link to print your accession inventory. Review Appendix I of the ICMS User Manual and DOI Museum Property Directive 21 on the inventory or the NPS Museum Handbook to decide whether your unit is required to perform the accession inventory. Generally, you do not need to do an accession inventory if the entire collection is fully cataloged or the only uncatalogued objects in the collection are from accessions that you received within the last year. You must complete the accession inventory if you have uncatalogued objects from accessions received before the previous inventory. When you have printed the random sample, controlled property, and if necessary, accession inventory forms, you are finished with what you need to do in ICMS for the inventory. You are now ready to conduct the physical inventory of your museum collections. You will carry these printed forms with you and mark the columns indicating whether the object was found, whether it is damaged, etc. Refer to the special instructions in the Appendix I of the ICMS User Manual, DOI Museum Property Directive 21, or the NPS Museum Handbook for conducting the physical inventory. You must edit the catalog records to correct any problems identified during the physical inventory involving location, condition, and item count. For example, if objects are found in a location other than the location cited on the printed inventory form, you must update the incorrect location in the catalog records or move the object to the correct location. Remember that you must update incorrect locations on the catalog record, not the inventory module. If you find damaged objects during the physical inventory, you must update the condition field on the catalog record. You have completed the inventory requirements once you have completed the physical inventory and your responsible official has signed the forms. There is no requirement that you enter the data from the forms into the inventory records in ICMS. The paper record with the findings from the inventory is all that is necessary to keep. However, it is a very good idea to enter the data into the ICMS inventory records and rerun and reprint the reports with the completed inventory results. Completing the yes-no responses on the inventory records also updates the matching inventory history supplemental on the catalog record. This creates a history of the objects that were inventoried. To enter responses in the inventory module, return to the random sample inventory. To modify the data on a random sample inventory record, click the Modify button, or choose Modify this record from the Edit menu, or press F10 on the keyboard. A separate window opens. In the random sample screen, some fields are inactive and cannot be edited. For example, the catalog number and object location are not editable because the inventory pulls this data from the catalog record. You may edit the yes or no fields and the remarks condition field. 
The yes-no fields to indicate whether or not the object was found, the record was found, the location was okay, etc. Press the tab key to move from field to field. Note how the field help explains what type of data to enter in each field. Enter the data for this record you wrote down on the printed inventory form. In the yes-no fields, you may enter Y or N. If you enter the wrong letter, press Control-Delete to remove it, and then type the correct letter. You may leave the field blank if needed, such as for records of objects that have been deaccessioned. If you enter No in any field except the damaged field, enter an explanation in the Remarks Condition field. You may also use this field to enter notes on the object's condition. When you have finished, click Save and Close. You will return to the main Random Sample Inventory screen. Click the Next Record button to go to the next record, and modify that record following the same steps. You can continue to update each inventory one at a time using this method. Updating the Yes, No, and Remarks fields in the Inventory module will also update the Matching Inventory History Supplemental on the Catalog record. It creates an inventory history of the objects. This new supplemental is also where the two new fields required in DUI Museum Property Directive 21 on Inventory, Date of Inventory, and Inventory Method are located and are automatically filled in. You can edit the inventory records more quickly by the Mass Update tools in ICMS. These tools let you update groups of records at the same time. To use any Mass Update tool, you need to select multiple records in the list pane. Stretch the list pane so you can see more of the list. Use Shift-Click to select a contiguous group of records. Use Control-Click to select individual records. An easy way to select all the records in the list pane is to click once in the list and press Control A, which is Select All. With multiple records or all records selected, from the Edit menu select Modify All Records. The Modify All wizard opens. Note that it tells you how many of your inventory records will be updated. Click Next to continue. The Modify All Data Entry screen opens. Here you can enter data that applies to all the records you have selected. For example, if all of your random sample records were found during the physical inventory, enter Y in the Object Found field. You can then fill in any or all of the active fields to update all the selected records at once. Click Next to proceed. Verify that the correct number of records will be updated and that the fields will be updated with the new data you want. Click Finish. You will see the message that confirms the number of fields and number of records that were updated. Then you'll close the Modify All window. We won't do this update during the training session, so I'll click Cancel now. Another Mass Update tool is Quick Entry. Again, you must select the records you want to update by highlighting them in the list pane. Then from the Edit menu, choose Quick Entry, then Quick Entry Formats Management. Here you can create a new Quick Entry format that includes the fields you want to update. Click the Create New button to create a new Quick Entry format. Enter a name for your format. Then click the Columns link to add the fields you want in the template. The Select Fields window opens. Click to select from the list of available fields on the left and add to the list on the right, which are the fields you want to show in Quick Entry. Each of these fields will show as a column when you update the records using Quick Entry. It is helpful to put the fields in the same order as on the random sample screen and in the printed inventory form. 
That will make entering the data easier. If the fields are out of order, click to select a field in the Columns to Show list. Then click the mouse up or down buttons to rearrange them. When finished, click OK. Then the Quick Entry Manager window. Click Save and Close. Now to edit the inventory records using Quick Entry, from the Edit menu, choose Quick Entry, and then Modify Records with Quick Entry. With your newly created Quick Entry format selected, click OK to activate it. The Quick Entry window opens. You can now quickly fill in the yes and no answers for each record from the printed inventory form that you completed by hand during the physical inventory. Press Tab to move to the right along a row. Press the down arrow key to move down each column. For example, you can quickly enter Y in the Object Found field, press the down arrow key, enter Y, down arrow, Y, etc. When complete, click Save and Close. The edits you made in Quick Entry will be applied to the records in the Random Sample Inventory. We are not going to make this update during the training, so I'll click Cancel. You can use the same Mass Update tools, Modify All and Quick Entry, in the Controlled Property Inventory or the Accessions Inventory. Now here are some of the things you should know about the Inventory Module as well as answers to frequently asked questions. Do not generate a new sample if you have already printed the inventory forms and started to conduct the physical inventory. Generating a new sample will produce a new group of randomly selected catalog and accession records. As a result, your previously printed forms will not match the newly generated sample data in the inventory module. The random sample only pulls in data for randomly selected catalog numbers, if the matching number exists in your ICMS database. You cannot add records to the random sample inventory screen. The controlled property inventory is not a random sample. It pulls all catalog records that have Y in the Control Property field. The program allows you to add records in the Controlled Property Inventory screen. The ability to add a record here accommodates cases where an object has not yet been entered into ICMS, but it meets the requirements for controlled property and needs to be included in the Controlled Property Inventory. If you have objects that are controlled property, you should make every effort to enter their catalog records in ICMS before you generate your inventory rather than adding a new entry within the controlled property inventory. Adding a new record directly into the controlled property inventory screen will allow you to print a complete inventory but will not create catalog records in the catalog records module. The inventory module retains this information for the next year so that you do not have to add the record again. The accessions inventory is a random sample. The resulting inventory list will include accessions that are fully catalogued and partially catalogued. You do not have to inventory the objects in a fully catalogued accession. If you have accessions on the list that are partially catalogued, only inventory the uncatalogued objects. We are now at the end of this training. Remember to use the system help and the ICMS user manual. If you need technical support for ICMS, contact Rediscovery at the phone or email shown on the help menu under About Rediscovery. You can reach Rediscovery technical support at 434-975-3256 or send an email to support at rediscov.com.